and welcome to Seriously Pointless Conversations About Culture, your Seriously Pointless podcast about all your nerdy and geek things. Today, we are going to be going traveling, as it were, to the Valley of the Wind, Jackie. That's right. Today, we are going to be talking about Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. Um, so this is probably one of my favorite, uh, Studio Ghibli films of all time, as you, as you know, because mm-hmm. you, you brought this into my life. Um, how, what's your, what, what are your, what's your initial impression of, uh, of this? Of this? Yeah. Well, I was going to say it's not actually Studio Ghibli. This was made before Studio Ghibli. Oh, it was? Okay. Yeah. This is actually what brought Studio Ghibli together kind mm-hmm. of this was one of well, the first I know, things i know it had a lot of the the principal like animators that it came did. and moved in yeah it's like proto ghibli essentially yeah exactly but it i think that this led to the creation of studio ghibli okay but did i mean you, do you do you enjoy it just oh yeah i love brief, it of course brief yeah as i said i know uh, you like most of their stuff so i just want oh to know. yeah the, i mean i think this is a groundbreaking anime you just started differently i didn't know if you were gonna Ask me what I've been doing or what have you been up to that's nerdy? Do you want to talk about that first or uh, you just want to talk about Nausicaa? I, played, I finished Guacamelee 2. Is that is that a challenge? <laughs> I mean, that's it was fun. So I played Guacamelee 2. That was really fun. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm switching over from, from nights to days, so my brain is a little, like, off, discombobulated, to say the least. Um, but I actually got done playing... Uh, guacamole 2 i got it off of uh, game pass it was free on there um well it's not technically not free but but anyways long story short i played it i like it i liked it so i played the first one a long time ago you, you've seen me playing it and I, mm-hmm. I think you actually got me a shirt for it or i got a shirt of it somewhere you you got the shirt for yourself but Probably. i admired it because of the like latino yeah. like hispanic roots. culture definitely definitely some in there but um if you guys like uh, side-scrolling kind of uh, platformers, I would highly recommend it. It's made by Juicebox Studios. They are, it's hilarious. I, the jokes in it are, are goofy and dumb, but at the same time, there's a lot of challenging platforming things in there and they add on to a lot of the first one if you guys have played the first one. So I would highly recommend it. Um, in other news, we, you and I, Jackie, we have been sitting watching a lot of Lord, the Lord of the Rings. Of the Rings. So yes. where are we at in it right now? You in the fellowship. Of, yeah, um, in, we are in the fellowship. And just in the film version where uh, Gandalf just fought off the Balrog yeah, and he, went falling down into the It pit. did not pass, but... Yeah, yeah, well, and I'm reading the book as well, and I'm just to the forest of uh, Lorien or Lothlorien. Yes, Lothlorien. And um, just... It's interesting comparing the book to the film because I read the books, but years and years and years ago and haven't read them since. So rereading it is very nice. But um, in the book, Gandalf doesn't say you shall not pass. He says you cannot pass. And that's yeah. what he repeats. So that not just that that's terribly like important. It was just interesting. I like verbiage. shell better. Like you shall not pass, but maybe just because the movie makes it so dramatic. But the book's amazing. Well, I, hats I'm off. enjoying both of them though. Yeah, it's hats off. Nice. Hats off to Sir Ian McKellen. He did a hell of a job as Gandalf. Like mm-hmm. I said, I would, I would, I would love to see him come and play that role again. But I know he's probably never going to do it. But it's one of those things. It would be really cool to see him come back or at least voice him somewhere he's, online. Yeah, so. I was going to say that's one of those few times where I feel like the actor was spot on. Like that. Oh, is absolutely, Gandalf. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, I, between him and I really liked. I like um, Viggo Mortensen as Aragorn. Aragorn. I think he did. Yeah, a, he's good too. He's a he did an excellent because he's he finds the fine he he's able to tread that fine line between I know what I'm doing because I'm a ranger and I'm I know I'm a very good fighter and I'm not arrogant because I'm the son or I'm the heir of Isildur kind of thing. So it's really cool. So, but mm-hmm. talking about les- legacies at this mm-hmm. point, I mean, this is, I mean, well, and Nausicaa was, I was like talking about books and movies. Nausicaa and, and was huge. based on a manga, manga, which, which we, you bought me. I actually have, have it over here. Yeah. The two giant volumes. Ha- yeah. You'd be happy to know that our child Lewis was actually over there, uh, fiddling Reading around with it with- <laughs> well i opened it up and showed him and he actually started to look at it pretty heavily because he was like what is that you know like like what looking at a lot of images he's lots of images so picture he's so he's only two right now so he's really kind of just absorbing he's most mostly a picture kind of kid right now 
So I, I kind of, I hope that he takes an interest <laughs> in it. If he doesn't, that's fine. It's like I said, it's, it's one of those things. I just feel like it's one of those amazing masterpieces. And mm-hmm. I had initially not known that it was a it was manga. based on a manga. I just thought it was because uh, an animated film from uh, from Miyazaki. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's kind of one of those interesting, like, initial tidbits that we can go over here. But do you want to do a quick little rundown of the movie before yeah, we get into it? Yeah, and at, at some point, remind me, I do want to talk about the manga versus the film. Because there are substantial but we differences. Like, we could do a whole ton of sessions on that. Absolutely. Alone. But anyway, get back to organization stuff. So, sorry. <laughs> I threw you off by asking you about your guacamole. That's okay. Um, but yeah, the intro, See, the initial did. thoughts. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Okay. Um, anyway, so normally David reads this, but I'm going to read it today because he's tired. Yeah, um, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind is a 1984 Japanese animated epic science fantasy adventure film adapted and directed by Hayao Miyazaki based on his 1982 manga of the same name. It was animated by Top Craft for Tokuma uh, Shoten and Haku Hodo and distributed by the Toei Company. And Joe Hisaishi, in his first collaboration with Miyazaki, composed the film's score. And it's amazing, by the way. I love the music in this. But anyway, uh, the film stars the voices of Sumi Shimamoto, Goro Naya, Yoji Matsuda, Yoshiko Sakakibara, and Iemasa Kayumi. Uh, Taking place in a future post-apocalyptic world, the film tells the story of Nausicaa, that's voiced by Shimamoto, the young princess of the Valley of the Wind. She becomes embroiled in a struggle with Tolmekia, a kingdom that tries to use an ancient weapon to eradicate a jungle full of mutant giant insects. So, yeah, that, Whoa. I mean, yeah, that is, that is a pretty decent premise uh, for the movie. But it's intense. I know, so do you want to go over the development first or do you want to go over... The, the, story the story first, um, your choice. I mean, I'm always interested in the storyline, but you have this organized nicely. So do you want to read part B? Ooh, look at you. You're just <laughs> like, let's just skip down and do these things. So you read that part, the development, and then I'll get into the storyline. No, that's okay. So Nausicaa and the Valley of Wind was de- adapted, like we said, from a manga that Hayao Miyazaki initially had written, probably... I don't know. He wrote it over almost a, I think it was about a decade. He, he wrote started it. in 1979, yeah. according to your research. Yeah. So but I guess mainly 1982 is when they say like came out. Yeah. He, he, so he, he did kind of conceptualized it over the course of about a decade from what I gathered watching videos and interviews with them. Cause he always had this kind of idea in his background. This is kind of what I want to do because he's always had these interesting ideas. Like we've said in our, our previous, you know, uh, episodes that he always has this interesting idea and conceptualization of like what you know how how are we able to take care of the planet kind of thing he's very mm-hmm. kind of eco e- you know ecologically he, yeah. centric I mean, you can see that in mononoke like he very is really so. interested in the environment in the environment but i think another big thing you see here is like planes he yeah. was obsessed with planes. Yeah. Like the movie The Wind uh, well, also you, rises. Yeah. Do you, so you know his his dad actually worked on airplanes during World War II mm-hmm. for the ja- the, the for Imperial Japanese at the time. Yeah. So, so, so that's kind of where he gets that from. Yeah. And he he was always like drawing planes. He was very fascinated, and then also a strong female lead. Like he very really so. likes having like a strong well, female lead during that time period. It was out of the ordinary really Mm -hmm. even in japanese uh animation especially in american man (laughs) and american films animation like you didn't really have that which is very it was very much of a culture shock but it it really did made it made sense to me because you know and there are strong women in the world Mm -hmm. and you know in this especially if you go to like a futuristic apocalyptic world there's going to be less you know, less men, you know, and there's going to be less people in general. Well, so you can't really say, be I don't know if the apocalypse would discriminate based on gender. I don't think, I don't, I don't think a nuclear bomb <laughs> is going to do know. that. So, but anyway, so obviously, like we said, this was adapted from a manga that he had written for a while. And even though we have these two enormous volumes, I think it was, it, it spans actually about six, I think it's six smaller volumes. Um, like it would, I guess you would call them trades, essentially, in in uh, in manga kind of uh, terms, I guess, or in American terms. 
But anyways, they they really only cover the first two throughout the movie, from what I've got, from what I remember. Well, yeah, he and I actually read kind of down in your notes. It makes sense because the the film itself only like you said, it's it's like barely the first chapter or two yeah. in the um and, and out of the manga because there's so much in the manga. Like yeah. it, there's Which, so much. If you guys get a chance and you're able to find these somewhere, pick them up or just even it's just worth a read. It's, yeah, it's very good, but it's very long, and they're. Yeah. I mean, the volumes are huge. I'm not sure if you could find them as small, separate books, but like the not giant anymore, volumes no. that you got me, the well, number like, one, the number two, they're I, yeah. massive. I like those because they have a couple extra little things in them, like the maps that oh, you there's drew. A, well, there's a lot of extra things. Yeah, which is <laughs> great. You know, there's so. just a lot more development, but the film. I feel like he did adapt the film very well for like the storyline that he took. So this is actually his, I guess you would call him as his, 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 it would be his freshman project. I would call it, but this is actually his second film he directed. Yeah. So he he did Lupin the third castle of Cagliostro. The big, the big difference between that and this one is Lupin, the uh, castle of Cagliostro that was already in a kind of an established like a story, story right? That line. He just came in. They just kept on. They Whereas, just they basically just picked him like, "Hey, do you want to do yeah. this film?" And he's like, "Sure, I can, I can, Which, I can direct it and kind of animate a little bit." Also, a very good film. But. It is very, it is very good, and it kind of has developed that kind of cult following, like most Lupin films <laughs> are. Which they actually, fun fact, they I think Studio Ghibli is set to actually do a 3D version of Lupin the Third, which I think is got guy. Gar- Goro Goro is involved in that one. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's directing it or not, but I think they're involved in that. So three <sighs> D. Well, I know you're not I'm super not happy, but talk about that. But. I know, but but <laughs> this is. I guess your point here with Nasuka, this this is like pure Hayao Miyazaki. Like, exactly. This is his so idea. He, he, he had did ultimate all of this. ultimate creative freedom to do mm-hmm. what he wanted with this, and it really shows. Because yeah. this is the first time that he ever has complete creative control over what he wants to do. And whenever artists have that, their personality really mm-hmm. shines through. And it's either like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Or it's, oh, my God, this people person this is, is really freaking. this person is really <laughs> jacked up in the head. So, you know, it's it, it's usually one way or the other normally or, or you both, know, you know, or both. And because you, <laughs> you get things like Mike Mignola or Eric Powell, who I don't know if you like you've seen this kind of stuff that they do. Mm-hmm. Eric Powell does the goon. Yeah, I love the way he draws, hyper realistic, but it's kind of really grotesque, and he does a lot of monster stuff. I love that kind of stuff, and you can get those worlds, and you get to kind of get a, a little bit of a glimpse inside mm-hmm. the the creator's mind a little bit. But anyway, so Miyazaki had, was able to create this film, and he actually uh, was able to have it released on March 11th in 1984. It was released in Japan. And like we said earlier, it was a heavily adapted version um, that he had taken care of or had had made, yeah, of yeah. course, of course, uh, over the course of about a decade. Um, but eventually, after kind of, you know, being in Japan, having some success in Japan with it, you know, people thought this was an amazing movie. Like most of his his films, they kind of really start in Japan and then they eventually made their way to the U.S., you know, almost a couple decades later. Well, it looks like the thing you're referencing. Oh, I thank God. I I've never seen this one, but you said it's the heavily edited ad- adaptation of the film created by Manson International, Warriors yeah. of the Wind. That was like that, that was, was the first one that to was come a, to the U.S. For, but that was like they had heavily such a, edited. It had such a minimal. Okay, so I looked this up. It had such a, a. It was heavily adapted. It's literally maybe so the original movie is almost close to what two hours probably the one in japan I don't remember it's about an hour and 45 minutes they edited it down to it was almost an hour and 15 minutes and it says 30 that, they took out 30 minutes yeah. of already a heavily adapted you know you know manga mm-hmm. that's put into an hour about an hour, hour 45 minutes they heavily adapted down to an hour and 15 minutes because they think american audiences are so dumb they're not going to be able to hold their attention for more than an hour and 15 minutes. I don't which, know that it was that. I probably, they probably wanted to market it. Like they yeah. wanted to, like well, they you pro- saw what they, they did well, with Sailor no, Moon and no, things no. like so, that. So what they did is, I, I, and I seriously believe this. I seriously think that the only thing they, they thought they couldn't market it as a, they wanted to market it as a children's film mm-hmm. that had action in it. 
And so they cut out a lot of the talking parts of it. They, they seriously did. Like if you look up a version of it. Or some of the super violent parts. Cause no. Because there are some. They, they leave a lot of the violence in there. Oh. They leave a lot of it in there. They don't like keep it like, you know, they don't go crazy with it, but they, they try to make it as, as action oriented as possible. Just and it, for children. Just for children. And so they can get people to come in there and watch it. And it, and it, it really does a disservice to the whole film because that's not what his films are about. Well, you yeah. know, violence is a part of life and Miyazaki really pushes that in there. But at the same time, you have to have a dialogue with people and have character development and things like that. But luckily we were able to have Walt Disney kind of stepped up probably even what mid two thousands. It says 2005 is when yeah. um, Walt Disney made an uncut redubbed yeah. version yeah. And, and they released that. Yeah. And I don't know if I have the uh, people that are involved in that or not. No, I don't see them, but in, yeah, and for okay. everyone pretty much, this is part of your note too. I don't know if it's important. I kind of mentioned it already, but like you don't people consider this a Ghibli work, even though it's not, this was made before studio Ghibli was founded, yeah. but well, like it's I said, kind it's, of lumped in there. It's proto proto Ghibli. It kind of helped create it though. Create the studio. So in the English version, uh, they have um, they actually have some pretty decent, uh, pretty big people. Actually, they is have this the two thousand five. Yeah, this is the two thousand five Disney version. They have Allison Lohman uh, as Nausicaa. Patrick Stewart is Lord Yupa. Mm-hmm. Shia LaBeouf is uh, as I remember that, Yeah. Uma Thurman is uh, Kashana. Who's the queen? The, she's the princess. Princess. Of I apologize. That uh, Chris Sheridan, priceless. Edward James Olmos, uh, mm-hmm. Trace He's McNelly, good. Frank Welker, Mark Silverman, Emily Bauer, Mark Hamill is actually in it. He's the mayor. He's the the mayor of Pejit. 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 I say Pejit. That's fine. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Uh, you got you got Jody Benson. Um, oh, they actually have. Uh, Rihoko Yoshimi Yoshida, he does actually another one, uh, and then Tony J is the narrator. I guess they had a they wanted to put a narrator in there, but because um, they don't have that in the original one. But anyways, there's not a narrator in the original Japanese. It one? says in a. There's apparently nobody narrates. They just have a scroll. Oh, okay. So oh, th- I remember yeah, that. Yeah, because we've seen the we've seen original both. Japanese version yeah. in theaters. It was amazing. They did like a Miyazaki or Ghibli festival. I, yeah. I want to really give good. a shout out for James and Kelly for seeing that pop up a while back. That was almost two years ago now. Yeah. But we actually got to well, go. Yeah. We got to go see that. And that was probably when you were like, do you want to go see that? And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go see it. I'm like, that'd be really fun to go see it, But I don't know if we have time. And you're like, I think we need to go see that. And you're just like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay. You like took no hesitation from me whatsoever to say yes. But that was great. I had a blast at that. Mm-hmm. Well, you always told me Nausicaa was probably your favorite Ghibli film. It, it's actually one of my favorite films of all time. Mm-hmm. Just because I said, that's the one thing I love about you. uh, Whenever we started dating, you had such an appreciation for animation that that I didn't have. You know, I I enjoy things like South Park and the crude humor (laughs) kind of things. But and but I wasn't like really, really into, you know, anime. Mm -hmm. I was more into like, you know, like the show, the the Shonen Jump type stuff, the Mm -hmm. Shoho. And, and like like Cole and James and those guys were really into it at the time. And you were like, there's a whole other world out there, you know, like <laughs> of like really high class anime or and, and, you know, animated films that are from Japan. And I'm like, oh, really? And you're like, yeah. And you start showing me all these. The and Ghibli I, films. And the Ghibli films. Yeah. Along with. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. And that kind of just opened up a whole other world of my mm-hmm. eyes, which got me into things like Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. Uh, Paprika. And it just. And, you know, all these amazing things that I was not expecting to find. And, and like I said, that's that's kind of one of those things I, I just want to say thank you. First off, <laughs> well, I just want to have welcome. that. On, I want to have that on record. OK, so <laughs> on, but, yeah, on, on a record, record on, on the that, record that I was that I'm very appreciative you. of that. Well, so I would thank my mom because she introduced me to that when I was a kid. She got foreign films for us to watch. And yeah. I think coming from a family of artists, I don't know. That's something I feel like our culture and like the United States doesn't 
we view animated like animation as either for children or now it's, it's not- gotten in vogue for like adult humor, things like yeah. Bojack Horseman and the Simpsons, like and family guy, but there's nothing really in between that, like yeah. the crude stuff or like purely for kids. And luckily, but like, when you look at Japan, that's one thing I love about the culture is animation is such a huge part exactly. of it. And it's like for everyone and it really any is. kind it of animation, well, any, any kind of like storyline. Prime, line prime example, you were watching, you were watching me. I was at, it came downstairs to talk to me. I was working out today. I was watching Sleepy Princess and Demon Castle. And you're like, you're like, what is going on? Yeah, And that's kind of like one of those like goofy TV show or goofy animated shows that are, are amazing that you can kind of find that middle ground where it's not really super serious. It's just goofy. And it's a time waster, but it's great and fun just to kind of watch. So like you said, it's, it's for anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, but without gushing a whole lot more, do you want to go into the, the storyline? Story you don't have to go super yes. duper in the storyline, but um, like, let's just do. Yeah. Cause you have a huge note here. I mean, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> would you rather I read that or do you want me to just talk about what happens? Talk about what happens. I want to hear it from your perspective. <laughs> if you remember, I know you, cause you have a better memory than I do. And I kind of have a nice generalized overview of everything that occurred. Mm-hmm. So but yeah. if you want to start, well, I'll film maybe film. Okay, drawings. good. Yeah. I guess like 25 minutes in, we need to tell the people what Nausicaa is about if they don't know. Um, but yeah, it's basically it's about a woman being a BAMF. <laughs> there a young lady a young yes. a young lady <laughs> but yeah it's basically so they start out with um like it's a thousand years after the seven days of fire which was basically an apocalyptic war that mm-hmm. destroyed civilization and created the vast toxic jungle or they call it the sea of corruption yeah um, so they kind of kind of talk about in the that you see it a little bit more in the film but you see like the though these yeah. giant mechanical looking things They're that are walking like humanoid robot machine kind of like things giants. but also they're kind of it's it's very scary like the beginning yeah. does a good job with like the music is beautiful and they kind of show some tapestries mm-hmm. that recount the you know the seven days of fire and you see the giant figures in the background with they have like these giant sticks and they have these like they i mean you find out later but like these burning eyes they can shoot out like fire they're they're radioactive yeah they're awful and you see like them in the tapestries and you see like the city's destroyed and it's just horrible um so it's basically that they established that this is what happened it's been a thousand years since that and now humanity still exists, but on the fringes because yeah. it's basically there's this giant toxic forest jungle sea of corruption yeah. filled with all these gigantic mutated insects <laughs> that are huge. I mean, things like bigger than elephants, like way bigger. And um, they kind of they talk about the story centers in the Valley of the wind, which is very close to the toxic forest, but it's safe because yeah. the winds come from the sea and they keep the toxic um, spores, the spores out of the Valley. So there's actually where Nausicaa lives. She's the princess of that kingdom with her father and their people. And it's a really beautiful place. Um, but then the rest of civilization you kind of find out is all on the outskirts, like Tolmechia and Pegite, kind of around like these awful deserts. Yeah, they, and uh, they're kind of on the like on, the, on fringes the fringes of the fringe, you know. It's yeah, just like, you know, and it's just kind of the that's how it is. And then in the beginning, I believe you see Nausicaa, um, or you might actually, or you see Lord Yuma. But you yeah, don't know that's him yet. And he's yeah. got, I call them chocobos. <laughs> they're not, they're, I think they're called horse claws, but they look like chocobos. And actually I was reading your notes. That's the Final Fantasy creator. That's where they got the idea yep. well, it <laughs> for came chocobos. Out, I mean, it came out a few years and, before. I mean, this film so. was just very inspirational. Um, but so Lord Yuma's riding one and he has another one with packs on it. And he's kind of leaving the forest. Yeah, because he's he is kind of like a, a trader slash traveler. He's like a wandering. Um, he's like a master, though. He's yeah, like a master he's fighter. fighter. He's kind of he's stuff, kind yeah. of like Gandalf. That's on my mind. A little bit. He's yeah. not a wizard. There's no like magic here. No, but he's, he's definitely not a wizard. I mean, he 
<laughs> he's like that. He's like a mentor figure. Um, and basically, uh, Nausicaa in the very beginning kind of saves him because like the, um, I think the Ohm start to stampede those yeah. giant, giant, um, they look like giant pill bugs or like roly poly bugs. It's yeah. massive. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she's able to like save him. Um, cause I guess he had gone into the toxic forest. Yeah. He's thought it was a child and it was this little, um, rabbit squirrel creature yeah, fox ends, squirrel. ends up saving it yeah. yeah and they end up coming after him and she ends up like dropping these little like i guess you call them flashbangs almost yeah that and it kind of like stun, stun, them. stun it stun them and, and i guess like, it's actually out, like, it's just one ohm. it's just one it's time, just yeah. one ohm that's going after him because he's lucky we see the stampede much later on and that's scary yeah. but just one is bad enough and so um, after that yeah, they, she, that's when you first kind of get introduced into the Valley of the Wind and you see how mm-hmm. luscious and green it is. Yeah, she's, that growing. she takes him back because yeah. he's he's like, you know, we're going to go. I'm here to visit with your family anywhere, you know, have news for your dad. Yeah, that's um, where you first meet her dad, too. Mm-hmm. You kind of find the out that he's, king. he's partly kind of like petrified or he's petrifying he's a little like bit. He's like paralyzed and they kind of talk about, they reference later on that anyone who lives close enough to the forest, eventually it gets you. Yeah. And he's been poisoned essentially. Yeah. By it. And that's the ill effects. That's um, kind of one of those things. That's why a lot of times in the movie, you as you'll see them wearing like respirators and things like yeah, that. Yeah. You they have, have to, they have to, otherwise, otherwise they'll die. Yeah. Cause if you inhale the spores, um, it'll get you. But yeah, that's, I mean, fast forward, they introduce the Valley of the Wind. It's beautiful. It's like a kind of safe place on the fringe. A little bit, yeah. Or it's it's very close to the toxic forest, actually. Yeah, but it's just luckily that mm-hmm. the winds are blowing that way. Yeah. And Nausicaa uses her glider and goes there a lot. Yeah. And she, I guess, she was, she found an ohm shell and she yep. took um, one, it's of eye, one of the eye like, patches. Yeah. It's I would like, call it like an like eyelid glass. almost. Because they don't really have like eyelids. It's like, a, it's almost like a, like it's like a, a, dome. Sh- a dome that goes like over their glass eye. glass dome, yeah. And, yeah. and whenever they shed their skin, it's like some of the hardest stuff. It's harder mm-hmm. than their ceramic knives that they talk yeah, about. Yeah, they can make a lot of, yeah, it's like good for armor and weaponry and such. Yeah. So she's collecting things like that, but she's also collecting spores. Yeah. And you find out later she's kind of raising the plants in the basement of the castle, Mm -hmm. but with fresh water and fresh earth, they're not toxic. Yeah. Because she's, because she's trying to figure out like, is it the, are the, is it the spores that is doing, or is it like, what is, what is causing, what is causing this pollution? pollution? And you kind of find out a little Mm -hmm. bit later that it's actually the earth that the spores are on initially. Well, that it's it, there's poison in the ground, which is why all the spores the that come from the toxic forest is sucking the poison, poison out. out. It's basically cleansing it's the earth, filtering it. Yeah, yeah, it's filtering it. Um, yeah. which they very interesting connection in the manga with that. But I'll come back to that. <laughs> um, do you? I'm jumping around so much because there's okay. there is so, a lot that happens. So here. after she gets back to the castle. Mm-hmm. Or the valley, and I say castle. It's a little. It's like a tiny little. Uh, it is a castle. <laughs> I guess you call a it a ca- castle. castle. It's like a small little tower. But anyways, after they get back to the, the castle, you kind of meet a few of the uh, people on the valley wind. And about that time, a giant aircraft kind of comes in and lands. No, or it, it crashes. crashes, and it's at night. It's at night, and, and so people are freaking out, and they're like covered in insects, and it's flaming, flaming and, and it's and, very. Yeah horrifying they hear it coming and yeah. nausicaa goes out people are like there's something on on the air something's coming yeah. and then she sees the ship and she goes and tries to rescue um it's actually princess lestelle of pegite yeah. is on that ship and she was a prisoner they see that after they crash um Nausicaa sees that she has um she was in manacles or chains and um lestelle like Nausicaa is kind of checking her out and you see her face. You don't see what's wrong with Lestelle, but you see Nausicaa's face, just this horrified look. And it's like, Oh, she's not going to make it. And Lestelle, the princess asks um, Nausicaa, like the, the cargo, the cargo, you have to burn it. You have, is it gone? Is it? And Nausicaa's yeah. like, everything's on fire. It's, 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 it's gone. Gonna, it's and gonna she's gone. like, no, the princess is like, Oh no. The princess just re- is like, Oh, thank God. Slightly and then she relieved, kind yeah. of, just passes away. Yeah. 
but they find out that no, the cargo didn't get destroyed. Um, yeah. It's one of the, it's a, the embryo of one of those yeah. giant bio so, humanoid. Yeah. It's, it's weapons. kind of a weird thing. It's almost like it has to be. I birthed. think they call them warriors. Yeah. They, they call them giant warriors is all they yeah, call them. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those. Um, but it's, but those are from essentially from, like we said earlier, the seven mm-hmm. days of fire, which I guess you would, Without it's basically like a giant war kind of like a a, yeah those were the weapons those were like some of the weapons yeah. that people used to fight each other and, and ended s- up destroying the world yeah uh, and so she doesn't survive Listel yeah Listel yeah, she passes away and she doesn't survive but like as they're trying to like save their village because they had brought in spores in yeah along with it they they were trying to like basically burn off the spores and things like that it's like the next day they're doing this. And then that's An- another, when the Tolmechian another, ships come. Yeah, the Tolmechians, which if for a little bit of reference in the film, there are two major countries you have. Uh, Tolmechia, Tolmechia and Pegite. Pegite. And, and they're they, warring. And they're warring. And they basically are just trying to get one up on each other the whole time. Mm-hmm. And one is kind of like a... A religious fanatical kind of thing in the in the um, in the manga, and the I other one is kind of more of like technology. Tolmechia is very. I f- I feel like Tolmechia was the one that was very very aggressive, like warlike yeah. in- into fighting. Um, well, like, do you remember in the manga? Like, one had like an a like a forever emperor, like a god emperor kind of guy. Like, he would like. I don't remember that as well. He had some weird stuff. He was basically trying to live forever and he was trying to find this technology in the old city and Mm -hmm. try and basically live forever. Yeah. They don't touch on any of that in the film because that, like I've mentioned before, there's so much in the manga and in the film, you can only do so much. But but anyways, without getting into all that, you just know, Pegite, Tolmechia, they're they're, they're fighting fighting and and Tolmechia shows up because they want the cargo. They want the cargo. Yeah. Kushana is the, uh, I've call her Uma Thurman. Yeah, that's fine. But in the English dub, that's she is. But she's the leader, and she shows up, and they find the cargo, and they basically take over the Valley of the Wind. Like, hey, yeah. we're here now. Yeah, they and come in. They, they come they, in. They, they kill. They kill Nausicaa's dad. Nausicaa's dad, and that's that's a good scene. That's, I mean, it's a horrible. That's scene. That's kind of the first time you ever see her lose control. Angry. Yeah, she well, because she, she runs in. Um, she fights past the guards. She gets in there and she sees her father's dead and mm-hmm. Princess Kushan is there with all her warriors. And it's like Nasuka just loses it and yep. starts killing people. And it's like, you, she's never been, I, I mean, this is still pretty early on in the movie, but the way they've established her character, she's so like sweet and caring and like, you know, curious about nature. And then to see her just start straight up killing people. And Lord Yuma is the one that jumps in and stops that. Yep. And she actually, that's the one part that always got me because she's got her, let's see. Oh, I think Lord Yuma puts his sword up against one of the warrior's throats mm-hmm. and she jabs her knife into his arm. Basically, yeah, he's put he's his arm out to stop her, her and yeah. you see blood coming down. And it's not, once she sees the blood, then it's like you see her realize what she's done and yeah. she drops everything and it just starts like breaks down and lord yuma basically is saying this is not the time to fight like this is you need to stop you're the leader now like we have to do what we can do let's figure this out like stop fighting yeah so after she does that the uh princess uh kushana she basically explains (laughs) she takes over and explains that she's going to use the giant warrior to try and burn the toxic jungle um and mm-hmm. that's the thing, though, is that's when you kind of learn about Nasca's little hidden area, yeah, uh, you, with the plants, and you find out that it's that it's not the plants that are that are causing the problem. It's it's well, the ground that they're on. They're actually helping it more than they're hurting. Yeah, you don't. They don't establish that yet, but they do establish that the plants in and of themselves yeah. are not bad. Like yeah. if she's like, there's fresh water, there's fresh earth. The plants are fine. Like they're not toxic. Because she, yeah. Lord Yuma, goes down there and finds her, and um, she's got basically this secret garden. And he walks in and kind of freaks out because he's looking at all these deadly plants, and he's like, oh my god! And she's sitting there with no respirator. Yeah, and she's like, no, they're fine. Yeah. She's like, I took the spores out of the forest, but I raised them here 
and now they're not toxic. And so then it's kind of like, oh, then you start thinking and they establish, they develop that more as they go on. But yeah, it's like, no, the plants are fine. Yeah, it's it's, it's the soil. Deep, it's, it's the soil, it's something else. But but eventually they they say, you know, we're going to go to the, um, I think they're trying to go to the back, they're trying to go back to the, basically the Temecian capital to try and, um, till her, her, the princess, um, oh, Tashana or Kushana, she wants to go back and, and tell her dad, like, Hey, we've got the, we've got the weapon, but we can't move it. You need to see reinforcements to help us out kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, but she takes hostages. Well, she takes uh, Nausicaa as one of the hostages and they start yeah. to fly and that's when they, they get take, attacked. Yeah. And they, they actually get shot down over the toxic forest. By um, Princess Lestelle's brother, her twin brother, yep. Asbel. Um, but yeah, that, that part is really interesting because that's where um, basically Asbel and um, I think Nausicaa, looks out at him cause he's zooming down in his ship going to yep. like going to shoot them again. And he sees her and thinks for a minute it's Lestelle and freaks out and, and stops misses, yeah. and misses. And then they shoot him down and he follow, um, he goes into the, into the forest and she's like, I have to go help him. Yeah. She, and, and yeah. I think in the chaos of that, she gets out yeah. with her glider and, and she goes down him, and yeah. saves him. Um, but then, they have like that giant flying centipede thing. That's so scary looking is, like the millipede freaky, yeah, thing. Yeah. There's so many, I will say the insects like Nausicaa befriends them and she's very good with them, but there's so many scary, awful ones that it's like, Oh, but it's that giant floating millipede comes and like knocks her glider. And then she and Asbel fall and basically fall down into like a sandy pit and get sucked down yeah. in. Which is where you actually figure out there's actually an additional layer to the forest, right? Yeah, that's like the um, the filtering layer. Like they're down there and they realize they can take their respirators off. They can there's breathe. and it's water down there. Clean water and it's all this sand and the sand is coming down from the forest. And that's where they realize that, oh, the plants, the plants are like they're sucking the toxins out of the earth. Yep. And they're basically filtering and cleaning the the earth. The whole earth so you don't have to. So they can try and live in it eventually, hopefully. Yeah. But, but while they're there, they actually run into some survivors or some folks that actually live in the forest, if I remember correctly. No, don't they? they don't. That's You're thinking of in the manga. There oh, are people that's that live right. in they the do forest, do that but there. no, they don't. I'm they sorry, don't. I'm getting that mixed up. If they did that, that... that is just too many layers of complexity. They don't do that. So, but well, anyways, they, they actually end up getting out of the forest, if I remember mm-hmm. correctly. And, and they go back to Pejai. Pejai, and they find out that... It's been attacked. It's been attacked by insects. So somehow the insects basically ravaged their, their but city and they country. were... The Tolmecians provoked you them. You find that, and that you kind of see they, that the Tolmecians they that's one of their tactics because they do it again. Yeah. Well, I guess then Pegite do do that. Yeah. Pegite does it to try and get back at Tolmecia, but they basically cause a giant stampede of ohms, like yeah. the giant millipede, not millipedes, the roly poly bugs, for lack of a better word. They're, oh, they're- and those are the, the ohms. The ohms, yeah. The, the umas or ohms. Camera no, they're just you. ohms. That's ohms. what they're called. But yeah, they. you see that poor Asbel is like, because he and Nausicaa have gone back to a city of Pegite, and you see so much destruction. And like, I don't think you see any survivors. Like, no. they find him on a ship later. Like, his mother's there with a bunch of women and children. Yeah. But like, in the, the last survivors. In the city yeah. itself, like, there's nobody. And it's just real sad. And so, so they they basically find out from the people that are on the ship that some of the remaining soldiers from Pejai are going to go and try and attack. They're going to try and provoke the Ohms to attack the Tolmecians. Tolmecians. And, Same thing. And that's the thing is the Valley of the Wind is situated in such a way that it's in it's between. It's in the, in the middle. So they're going to rampage through the Valley through of the Wind. Yeah. And Asbel and Lestelle's mother, she is kind of. She helps um, Nausicaa escape because when they yeah. get to the Pegite ship, um, the Pegites, when, you know, Nausicaa's like, that's my home and she's freaking out and they are like, no, we're going to 
like throw you in prison. Like we don't yeah. want you to, you, you can't, you can't get them. out and ruin this. Yeah. Cause this is our plan. It's kind of like a, a, a mutual destruction type thing. Yeah. It's so, it's so sad. And then you, you, you kind of think back to where, man, this is how the seven days of fire happened in the first place. People yeah, I mean, hate each other. Well, that's how any war kind of yeah. goes. It's <laughs> like one of... fire, one people, one of somebody sh- uh, attacks first and then that other person just mm-hmm. escalates and it goes up and up yeah. and up. But, but anyway, Lestelle and Asbel's mother helps helps her, her get out. They they help her escape, but they give her um, pegite clothing mm-hmm. and like a headdress, and she actually looks like Lestelle. Like people yep. confuse her for the princess at one point. I think they they do. Yeah, but and she but, gets away but, on her glider. But she gets away on her glider, and then she ends up going. Uh, heading back towards the, the valley of the wind, the valley of the wind. Warn them, but yeah. she sees the pegite ship yeah which most bizarre ship to me it looks like a little pot like a little yeah, pot or it's an like egg. a little pot so it <laughs> reminds me pot. if you ever seen um so baby looking. bowser flying around in any of the mario games like he usually has no. like a little it looks like a little <laughs> pot thing too but it's got like a lot of like anger like a, it's a little ink evil smiley face on it and it's like Yee. yeah well this one doesn't have an evil smiley face That's it just looks what it kind of silly of. But, but they're carrying a wounded baby ohm that is so sad yeah they have a little baby ohm like that they've stabbed through and it's hanging down and it's crying the whole yeah time. and, and that's can... what and then they realize that's what they're using to bait like yep. the, they're gonna make the ohm so angry they'll stampede um and i guess this is going to be important in a little bit, but I should mention the prophecy, right? We yeah. forgot that. No, it's okay. Big spoilers ahead of time. If you haven't seen well, this. Well, I mean, we're basically telling the story. So it's like, <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> you it's, just go it's watch good, the movie. It's, it's good amazing. stuff. It's good stuff. But do you want to like finish off the movie and explain how the ending goes? Or do you want to go? Sure. Yeah, I can do that quick. Okay, that's, and no, that's I can, fine. I, that's, I just didn't know how much you want to ruin for the people. Well, the prophecy is important because it comes in here in a little bit. But the in the prophecy, it's like there's going to be, they call him a pilgrim in blue, like a yeah. traveler in blue and so descending the, yeah. on a field of gold. And so throughout the whole movie, that's that's the kind that's of That's their savior. Like this yeah. Messiah is yeah. coming to lead us but, to peace. But Nazca always is. is seen wearing a blue like clothing, like a dress or... Something to that extent where you, she has as that a color prisoner, out. she gets a pink outfit. Yeah, what makes it blue is the blood of the baby Ohm. Yep, and she they basically she um is riding her glider. She stands up on it. It's pretty dramatic. Like you know, she's taken off her headdress. It's just her in the pegite dress with her arms outstretched, standing there like sacrificial almost and she's gliding towards the pegite ship and there's two men in it and one man is looking at her and he's like it's princess lestelle like oh my gosh it's our princess like i can't i can't shoot her and the other guy is like shoot her and like swings the gun around and shoots um basically part of her shoulder but she at that point has already like jumped into their ship yeah and basically knocks one of the guys out or like they crash land then yeah. And she is down there with a baby ohm, and you can see the when the ohms get angry, like their eyes turn red. Yeah, and, and you they're... can see off, like by the sea of corruption, like the giant stampede coming with all these it's red like eyes. Hundreds, if not thousands, of them. Oh, coming out. yeah, thousands are coming, and they're headed straight towards the valley of the wind. And Nausicaa gets the baby and kind of like tries to free it, mm-hmm. and it's trying to walk towards. Is it's like crying and trying to go towards the All the, other ohms, the yeah. stampede of ohms and she's, but they're kind of outside the toxic sea and it's like a sea of acid basically. Yeah. They're on like a little sandbar and yeah. she's trying to push it like no 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 don't go in there you'll die and um she it kind of pushes her into it a little bit and she burns her leg but then yeah. you see like it rear back and kind of use its golden like tentacle feelers yeah to c- kind of touch her like oh my gosh what's happening and, yeah and it kind of figures out like oh i'm hurting her mm-hmm. kind of thing yeah and so eventually well, the, and, whenever she's eventually able like she's she's able to the i guess we'll go ahead and go mention with the warrior though yeah the warrior that's, kind meanwhile, of like while well, this is happening the you see princess being, kushana has, yeah they, they've been they've pumping hatched it. the warrior they, yeah, they've been pumping but he's not ready yeah, he's like a pre, it's like pre, 
like a, I, it's like he didn't gestate long enough. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's really like grotesque. Gross, yeah. But they Kushana is like he's melting. Like yeah, he, like, like his skin atta- muscles are falling off yeah. of his bones, and she's like attack, and he sh- he does shoot his laser like fire laser into the ohms. But he's like can only do it a couple times. I, he- I think he only yeah does it like once or twice, and then he just melts, and all the Tolmekians are screaming because they're standing under him, and he's like you know his bones and yeah. everything is just melting off of him, and yeah, they're all screaming, and the Valley of the Wind, um, the people that they're kind of sheltered. And they're watching this and like, oh, those stupid Tolmecians, like this is what you get. Um, and they're watching from like an old they kind all, of building huddled and they're just a, uh, watching. Old, um, old submarine. Or an old, yeah, some kind of old ship. There's and an they're ship, just yeah. watching the ohms coming like this is it. Like we're, you know, huddled together. Yeah, and we'll see if we can survive kind of mm-hmm. thing. And and eventually Nausicaa is able to actually stop the ohms. Well, they all crash they go towards her. I yeah. guess she's in the way and they, they crash into her and the baby Ohm. Yeah. But then they, you, you know, they keep stampeding. You see her fly up in the air yeah. and then you see suddenly like they stop. Like they figured out like, Oh, Hey, like we're hurting somebody and we're hurting our baby. Well, the, and then their eyes start changing back from red to like blue. blue. And you see it's very pretty. Like just, you see the sea of ohms and like the eyes all changing mm-hmm. and they stop kind of right in front. Like there's an ohm that stopped like right in front of some of the Tolmecian guards mm-hmm. and they're just like oh. freaking out because you know mm-hmm. it's an enormous thing if we haven't described these things these things are humongous they're like stories tall yeah i mean humongous it's, i would say like three elephants probably easily yeah um but it's it's really cool to see them stop there in front of them yeah they all stop it's just so it's just it's just a, it's like it's a, a massive it's, if, dramatic. If any, it's so dramatic compared to like anything else you've seen in the film mm-hmm. at this point and, and then you they see the ohms have of, Nausicaa using their golden tentacles. Yeah. They've raised her up and it's they're basically like yeah. healing her. And yeah. you see the little baby too. And he's okay. So it's like, Oh, thank God. But then Nausicaa has been her Her dress has been stained blue by the blood yep. of the ohm. And then all the ohms raise up their golden tentacles. And so it looks like a field of gold and she wakes up. They've kind of like basically resuscitated her. And she stands up and she's walking on the tentacles mm-hmm. and you hear like a little child is la, describing la, this. La, 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 oh, that la. song. <laughs> I know you hate that. <laughs> um, the, the song is okay, but that's, there's so much better music in the film. I just don't <laughs> like that one. But the, the old witch lady, she's got like an old cross-eyed yeah. prophecy lady yeah. that like lived well, in the you palace. Gotta ha- you got to have a hag. Yeah. And she, she's blind. So she can't see. And she's telling the little kids of the Valley of the wind who are all huddled there. Like, just tell, describe what's happening. And the little child is like, it's uh, like the, it's Nausicaa, but she's, she's in blue and she's walking on a field of gold. And then the, the little the old lady is like, it's the savior. Rawr. Yeah. And <laughs> that's basically like, it's kind of where kind the, of how it ends. Yeah, and I it, mean, you see so, kind of an epilogue of the Tolmecians, yeah. Tolmecians that are left. Then, yeah. like they kind of join the valley. Well, Not I think they imprison that, them. They, I the think the Tolmecians you see, are the Pegites that join. It's one or the other. I can't remember. The Pegites don't. Sh- well, I don't think you see them show up. Okay, so it says you here. See a few it says the Tomekians leave the valley, mm-hmm. and the Pegites actually remain with the valley people, people helping them rebuild. Um, and then they go deep beneath the toxic jungle to help uh, rebuild. And you see a non-toxic right. tree, tree sprouts, sprouts, and that's yep. like the ending. Yep. Um, that's that's kind of where you go. So you kind of see that there man. is a bit of rebirth coming already. So that was a lot of talking. Sorry, man. That's okay. So, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so obviously, I guess if somebody hasn't seen it, dang, sorry. I that's know. your summary. Hey, yeah, you guys don't have to watch. You guys brain. don't have to watch the movie now because Jackie just explained the whole. No, thing No, the movie is so much better. <laughs> you you got to see the animation, like the emotion. It's oh, it's so good. So I know you you were talking quite a bit about it and you've gone over a lot of the obvious, the broad strokes of the film and things like that. There are a ton of themes in this movie. Yeah. And so what do you think are some of the big, without going, you don't have to go into super duper like detail on yeah. it, but what are some of the big overarching? Life, 
themes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, overarching <laughs> like themes you. and uh, kind of uh, value points. of life and yeah. the environment for sure. And how humans interact with the environment, what we do and how the environment will heal itself and will, it will, it will keep going on like mother nature does what mother nature does, no matter what we're going to do. Like we think we can control it, mm -hmm. but so, we definitely can't. That's a big thing. But then let me ask you this. What do you think? Cause I'm, conf I'm mixed. I think, I think that Hayo. Okay. So I'll just ask you the question. What do you, th what do you think uh, Hayao Miyazaki's opinion is about the human race? <laughs> <laughs> um i think just watching he these this is, yeah. doesn't like us i think he's mixed i've well and i feel that way too sometimes like we have such beauty and we have such like potential yeah but we end up destroying things so mm -hmm. often well and, and I even think... if you bring it down to the most simple of things of like a human interaction like you're so it's so easily available for somebody like you and I to have an interaction and misunderstand each and other, misunderstand and each start, other, you know, start, start a fight, fight or something, or argument. it could be, or it could be something as simple as, you know, I'm, I'm able to make a compliment to you or you're able to make a compliment to me and we take it the right way. Maybe we become lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's simple things like that, that you're able to kind of foster and grow. And I think yeah. he likes to, he takes these tiny little ideas mm -hmm. of like human interaction and he can, he builds on him and he yeah. basically expands on him and he he kind of really hits home i i feel like that we have a, an amazing as human beings we have an amazing capacity for creation but we also have an amazing capacity for destruction yeah well and i think yeah i would definitely agree with you that he i think that he shows that well in the film he shows that in a lot of his films he shows that in but all he films, also shows I like the beauty of like that human humanity is worthwhile people yeah. like nausicaa her fervor for like life and you see her make mistakes like when she goes crazy after her dad dies and starts yeah. attacking people but you see the beauty like her wonder at the world yeah. her interest in like preserving maintaining life learning and helping others yeah. um, well, so she learns throughout the film that it's not it's not always the best reaction to to it's not always the best to go with your initial reaction sometimes. Yeah, and to react, you know, like just kind of emo, like it's just straight, just straight not emotionally good. is not always a great thing to do. But sometimes it's it's sometimes it's needed because you can mm -hmm. see that because it, and sometimes that's the most natural reaction for us to have because of like like you said her mm. her dad died mm -hmm. and if I was in her shoes I would probably react a very similar way and be very angry mm -hmm. if somebody had killed my father yeah you know it's like it's 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 kind of a natural thing to do but he's able to balance that thing with like she knows that she's not acting rationally but this is this, is that or is that a rational moment for mm -hmm. you to be in like well, you, and I think too it's helpful like to have Yuma come in Lord yeah. Yuma is like the mentor figure mm -hmm. because he's the one that snaps her out of it very and you can so, yeah. you can tell that he's very very wise no absolutely um, and so like I said it, it's it's an amazing film that he's able to kind of juxtap mm -hmm. juxtapose all these different things and he's really it's I don't know if, how I feel about I think he's kind of anti-technology a little bit too. Kind of, I've, kind of gathered, <laughs> I've seen a lot no of his films. No wonder I like him so much. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting because I think he likes a very simplistic lifestyle, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Oh yeah. Um, although at the same time, he's very he's it's it's like you said it's he's all contrasts and yeah, you know, well, because you know different points because he all likes the planes and the machines. He loves, he loves he has tons of those. He loves that, yeah, like you said, lots he, of his he films. loves airplanes and he loves kind of like that 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 uh aerospace engineer kind mm -hmm. of stuff he loves that kind of ideas and he loves the idea of exploration and kind of science and learning but he also like you said like i said you know he, he understands this is a great there's a great how do i put this pro correctly and well he understands this is a great potential for destruction and with, mm -hmm. with the technology that we've learned and things like that and he's He's very def he's definitely got a little bit of a wisdom on his side, mm -hmm. even when he's this young in this film career, uh, making films and things well, like that. We just need to call Hayao. First, we need to learn Japanese very well, so we uh, don't absolutely. offend him, <laughs> and then call him and just ask him what he thinks. 
Oh, and if yeah, he absolutely. could explain. But I feel like he would give a very sly response of like, well, what do you think it means? I that's <laughs> just from like the interviews I've watched and like what I've read about him. Yeah. I feel like that's he would just smile at us and say, "Well, what do you think?" And it'd be he's like very much, yeah. He's very uh, much, yeah. He's very much kind of an infuriating figure. Feel bad for Goro now. <laughs> he knows. See, the thing is, he's always he's funny like that. I've noticed he likes. He knows what it means to him, but he wants to know what it means to you mm-hmm. because that's what it's, he's, he said. He says it a lot. He says, he goes, that's why it's called art. And it's mm-hmm. why it's called, it's for you to know, for you to figure out what it means to you. Cause mm-hmm. I already know what it means to me. Cause I made it. I think so, um, it's really interesting. So. I think I said this when we did our, my, my neighbor Totoro one, but like Hayao is amazing. And I just like yeah. want to thank him so much for making yeah. these worlds because the things, the people he's inspired, I just, every film he's done, I feel like I get inspiration out of it and creativity. And it's just to see that passion. Oh, I love it. No, oh, absolutely. And Ken, I know <laughs> I was going to say, we've been talking a long time, but can I like throw in a few things about the book real quick yeah, that I then, wanted to we'll mention? Ra- and, and then, then we'll we can talk bit, about yeah. critical reception well, and well we'll wrap up and we'll do kind of like the the ideas of where he he got the idea for mod nausicaa and that and the kind of mm-hmm. uh, other works that he looked at prior to doing that but yeah go and talk about the, the manga the, yeah. well the manga i need to read it again this and i think i also mentioned either in maybe spirited away and maybe in that one i think i mentioned that some of the time i feel like the fact that i am not from Japan and I didn't grow up in that culture. There's things that I miss that I can tell, like there's something here, but I'm not getting it. Yeah. I feel, especially in the end, very much in the end of the manga, Mm -hmm. like the way it ended to me was very, it was very confusing. And just, I felt like I was missing something big of like, this is a cultural, this is cultural knowledge that I just don't have because I Grew up in the Midwest, in yeah. Missouri, and well, the it'd United be, States. It'd be, speaking no, English. it'd be no different than like if somebody made a film or TV show about you know the Midwest, and mm-hmm. somebody in Japan watched, it and they think it's fascinating because it's not their culture. Yeah, and it's it, just a different lifestyle. It's kind of like mm-hmm. if somebody over in Japan watched Of Mice and Men. Mm-hmm. You know, it's essentially Midwest kind you of. Can, well, and I think. That's just that that is one thing with the book or I, it's the manga, but I'll just call it the book that I just felt like the ending especially was very confusing for me. And I, I need to read it again and just think about it, it and maybe like, research in the in the Japanese in the book. Like, they go to like a whole other land where there's like an ancient figure there well, and all kinds the, of and then the and then the great warrior st- is actually just states all the way. And he stays alive. It's it's bizarre. Well, there's. Well, another big thing stuff. in the book, and you reference this, but in the book, there are actually people that live in the toxic yeah. forest. And they, to me, they remind me of like indigenous native tribes that would live in like the Amazon. Mm-hmm. But they live, um, basically, they have created bubbles. Like yep. they live like all naturally, but they live within the toxic forest. Yep. And Nausicaa, like they kind of know about those people, but they don't have a lot of interaction with the outside world. But, um, she talks to them like they interact that happens there's just so much more going on with the war between Tolmechia so, and Pegite let me ask you this would you would you be willing how would you feel if they were like hey we're going to sue you Ghibli, like hey we're going to make a a series like a limited of series out of Nausicaa cuz i think that would be amazing i yeah i think that would be really cool i just kind of i do like the fact that the film on its own stands alone Absolutely. Like he, he made it wrap up. Whereas the book, like the film portion of the book is like the very, very beginning. And then, I mean, I would be, I think that'd be interesting, but I also just, I need to read the book again, but the, those, the things I mentioned, that's what stands out the most. The other thing Mm -hmm. though, and this is really sad. And I think that that's something that he, it's not referenced at all in the film. Cause I think it would make people lose their ever loving minds. But the, um, in the book, um, humans have evolved. They find out to breathe the toxic air, yep. not, not like you can't just go walk in the forest, but like 
they talk about how the forest, yes, is purifying the earth, but humans now, if that earth was all purified, would die because the people that live in the forest, um, at one point, I forget who's talking to who, but they're kind of talking about it. And Nausicaa is talking with one of the, it's like a young man who lives there in the forest. And somebody says, well, what about your, your people who've gone to the edge, who've gone to where it's completely purified, tell her what happens to them. And it's like, they all come back like bleeding, like gushing blood out of their throats and they die shortly Mm -hmm. thereafter. Like they tried to go, they take off, you know, their masks and things and try to breathe and they die. And so they, that's the thing that to me, it's like, oh my God. And so humanity gets really depressing in the book to think of, of like how, well, yeah, the toxic forest is here because it's cleaning the earth, but humans have evolved over the a thousand years to breathe this pseudo toxic air. And now if the earth does get completely purified, we all going to die. I mean, that's, it's not wrong. And that, so, and, but there, I mean, there's just so much in the book and it's, it's very good, but I like the film separate too. Like, I like that there's the two separate worlds because, and the film, like the book, I don't know that it's completely, completely depressing, but the way it's it not. ends is like, it's, it's definitely it a cultural makes thing. makes you think. Yeah. yeah. And again, I just need to study a lot more <laughs> Japanese culture and history. Well, like I said, it's, if you read a lot <laughs> of their like folk tales, yeah. they kind of end like that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And they kind of just, they, it, there's not a, a succinct conclusion to some of their folk tales. A lot of times it's like, mm-hmm. and they battled, uh, they, and they battled, and mm-hmm. then they just kind of stops and they, they end or like, and they went off or, and then the prince and the princess went off together and mm-hmm. that's how they end. And they don't, they don't tell you whether or not they live happily ever after. It's not like you're, you know, Europe, you know, Eurocentric German, like, kind of fairy tale fairy where tales. everything has a happy or a sad ending. You know, you know <laughs> well, I was gonna say Grimm's fairy yeah, that's why, tales. That's why I threw it in there. I was gonna say not. Know, not everything has <laughs> not a happy so ending, happy. but but it, it's it's just kind of interesting to kind of look at that. But looking at some of those things that he he draws sources from, like yeah, those fairy tales say, and the Japanese culture. You go culture, ahead and talk about the ending thoughts or the critical reception. The critical, such, yeah. They, so all, there's a lot I'm of done. there was a lot of things. Lot. They <laughs> this. So unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that I can say that's an original thought on this because this movie has been, re- you know, critiqued and reviewed to death because it mm-hmm. is so groundbreaking, groundbreaking for its time. And even still, like if you were to watch this and you can kind of tell with some of the newer, uh, some of the newer Studio Ghibli movies that they they did throughout the, it's a lot more polished. This is definitely like his freshman try where he has and it's 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 just him all the way through and he's talked about this movie filmed in ad nauseum and he even uh, you know cites several things like ursula ursula quinn's uh earth sea which i don't know if you ever read that or not i um, know what it is i've never read it but so that yeah. is you know tales of earth sea that's the one that yeah, goro did back in the day that. he did mm-hmm. that i think he kind of did it as an homage to his dad a little bit um you get isaac asimov's nightfall J.R.R. tolkien's lord of the rings which you know that makes a lot of sense it's mm-hmm. very very epic in its scope of how they want to do things. Um, Nausicaa is actually uh, some of the characters that they go after. So he pulls a lot of European and Mediterranean kind of history a little bit uh, for this. He, he actually modeled Nausicaa after a uh, princess in Homer's Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he also kind of goes after the kind of the epic scale of Frank Herbert's Dune, which mm-hmm. is an, another amazing. So, I don't know, you've never read Dune, but it's on the I same. I started le- to read it. I I just need to finish. It's on it. the same level yeah. as like Tolkien, essentially mm-hmm. for yeah. sci-fi. It's, it's a just big deal, it's I an know. amazing thing. So, but yeah, it's it's really kind of interesting that he takes all of these ideas and kind of like pulls them in there and really centers them around uh, his uh, his own world. Mm-hmm. So I really kind of like that. Whenever you can kind of look at the sources that authors or artists kind of pull from and kind of make their own thing out of it. But anyways, like we said earlier on the release in regards to the release and the reception, uh, it was released in March 11th of 84, 1984. Let's be clear there. We're in the year 2000 now. Um, it was released in Japan 
uh, on VHS and Laserdisc. Laserdisc for you kids that don't know that is our giant DVDs that you have to flip over whenever it gets to the next side. So it looks like a giant CD. It looks like a giant Huge, CD, but like the size of a record. Yeah, it's the size of a record. So if you guys don't know what that is, look it up online and you'll be amazed at how dumb people were back in the day about all this technology stuff that we have. I don't know that was dumb. It's just different. It was definitely different to they say were the least. learning. It's so, all evolving. Anyways, that was released the year after. Um, and then like it had a series of small releases and like box sets and things like that. Um, but it actually had that big re-release, like we said, with uh, Walt Disney and around 2005, which is where it had the release on DVD and VHS when it had a redubbing. Um, and, and then it was eventually actually re-released on, on, I believe it was, yeah, on Blu-ray in 2010. Um, that was the big box set that they had out with everything. They had, they collected all of them together and they redubbed. They didn't redub them. They redid it and like basically touched up, touched it up a little bit. But they didn't want to do a whole lot because, you know, Miyazaki still had, I think he had some kind of um, marketing control over it about how he wanted Mm -hmm. it taken care of when it was released and things like that. So, but overall, how would you think this film has been received, Jackie? Poorly or or well received? What do you think? Very well received. (laughs) Obviously. Yeah. So this is, it's, it's, it's frequently put up there as some of the, as one of the best uh, animated films in Japan, if not the entire world. Um, obviously, we've you know said it time and time again that Miyazaki's um, films and Studio Ghibli in general, because it's mm-hmm. not just Miyazaki. You know, obviously it's his it's his you know forethought and his direction that you know puts these films mm-hmm. forward. But all the people that work there with him that helped create these amazing you know two D images along with the the sound and the coloring and all this stuff. They help to make these things. And it's really seen that this film really was the reason why Studio Ghibli is alive today. You know, mm-hmm. that's they really feel like, you know, this film was such a breakout hit for him and his collaborators that they were able to fund Studio Ghibli and move forward. Um, but yeah, so here's a quick little c- quote from... Um, uh, it is uh, Theron Martin of Anime News Network. Um, so this is how he he talks about uh, Hayao Miyazaki's direction and Joe Hishaishi. ha- Hishaishi's uh, score. Uh, he said the film deserves a place on any short list of all time classic anime movies. Um, and that's just kind of a quick little quote about how you know uh, how he he feels that you know. And they said that a lot of people, you know, they, they look at this as it's it's a good film for people that don't like anime films or like anime to get into it because it covers a wide range of topics that aren't just about anime. And it's not like a typical shonen or or Action. on high school host club type thing where or even just a high school kind of like drama thing. But anyways, a lot of this is, you know, uh, like I said, significantly highly rated throughout you know the internet 88 percent 88 percent on Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes, tomatoes you get a lot good. of a lot of get a lot of get a you get a lot of eight out of tens things like that mm-hmm. but as like we were saying earlier um this this film has inspired so many things it inspired the chocobos uh and final fantasy uh it explain you know it's um it's captivated millions of artists throughout the world you know you get things like um, uh, people that made Metal Slug Three, uh, the game uh, uh, Crystalis, uh, which is also known as God Slayer, they they kind of uh, cite that. Even the film uh, Star Wars: The Force Awakens kind of <laughs> kind of I cited just read that Miyazaki and it a little kind bit. Of, it's interesting because it's you say shares common elements with the film, including similarities between the protagonists, Nausicaa and Ray, such as their personalities and headwear yeah, and a number I mean, of strikingly similar scenes. I'm now that I read that and yeah. think about both of them, it's like, yeah, I can see that. It's very, very it's similar. Kind of things. And I think they try to capture that in the bottle in that, in the new uh, star Wars film. And I, I don't think it quite clicked, but that's, that's fine. That's a whole nother argument for another story another day. But, um, but yeah, thousands of people love this film. And like I said, if if you guys have not gone out and checked this manga, 
especially or the film out highly i highly highly Mm -hmm. highly recommend that you guys go check this one out um this is like i said this is my top five movies of all time so i would i would wholeheartedly wholeheartedly uh wish somebody to go out and check this out would you recommend the same jackie well yeah of course absolutely so let me ask you this when um i know you told me no more parenting questions but are you planning on wanting to let lewis see this if he chooses to well yeah i just don't know when yeah. Don't ask me when. Don't ask when. I don't know when. Just, I, there's so many factors. I just can't. I don't want to. I don't want to think about it. No, not right now. <laughs> not right now. So, okay. All right, guys. Well, I just want to say thanks for you guys to stop and by. I think Jackie's kind of hitting the end of her her uh, her uh, a wick at the least, yeah, and she's got to go do some stuff. So, um, anyways, guys, thanks for stopping in. Um, Jackie, thanks for stopping in. Uh, I appreciate you coming in and talking to me. Um, is there anything you would like to say before we head out? No, other than check out Nausicaa. It's awesome. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap up here. Like I said, if you guys want to uh, hit us up on any of the streaming services that we have, any of the um, uh, podcast uh, reviews, things like that, if you guys want to just say, hey, you know, did you guys did we do a good job? Did we do a bad job? Um, I just want to hear from you guys. If uh, we have anything that you guys want us to talk about, let us know. You know, if there's something we haven't hit uh, hit yet, because like I said, we have you know a pretty narrow group of friends here that have specific interests and things like that. And I want to hear things that people haven't that people want to hear about. You know, maybe you want to hear about some random uh, Katamari Damashi film or a movie, not movie game. That's what I was trying to say that uh, that you guys haven't heard of I, on the on the podcast yet before but yeah let us know uh we are available on any of the social media sites that you're out there find us and hit us up guys all right thanks for coming by today and we are out of here talk to you guys later if you're interested in keeping up to date with new episodes on our channel add us on any of your favorite podcasting apps or subscribe to our youtube channel at seriously pointless conversations if you have questions or concerns please email us at Seriously pointless convo at gmail.com. We appreciate any feedback. Thank you for listening to our show.